that the president, I'm paraphrasing this part, uh, had added about $4 trillion to the debt, and then he said, quote, that's irresponsible, that's unpatriotic. Yeah. So I see a difference from Giuliani because he's talking about an issue, mm -hmm. but nonetheless questioning the patriotism of the President of the United States. Yeah. I, I think that what the President was doing was he was questioning the specific wisdom of that decision uh, and questioning whether or not that was in the best interest of the country. All right, if it was fair for the President of the United States, or I'm sorry, Senator Barack Obama, to call the president, George W. Bush, Bush, unpatriotic over an issue regarding the budget and spending, then would it not be fair for Scott Walker or any of us to call the president unpatriotic for about to sign a deal with Iran that, according to new reports, will give Iran carte blanche after about 10 years to do whatever the heck they want with all the uh, uh, centrifuges and, and nuclear material that they will be able to make for the, for the first 10 years and make bomb after bomb after bomb. How unpatriotic is that? Let's ask Jonathan Tobin, columnist and senior online editor of Commentary Magazine. Jonathan, uh, you've written about um, this uh, extensively. Uh, and of course, on top of everything else, we have the IAEA, saying that Iran is not cooperating, Iran is doing bad things, and yet it's as if now the IIEA doesn't exist because Obama, according to Iranian media today, is desperate for a deal. Well, great to be on with you again, Steve. And yes, of course you're right. Um, there is a, a great irony here that we're getting supposedly close to a new deal with Iran just days after we've had a report from the International Atomic Energy Agency that shows that they're still being stonewalled by the Iranians. They're not letting them do any reporting, any, any inspection on the sites which shows how close they are to um, military uh, getting a bomb weaponization. And at the same time, in the same context of this report, is the realization that the IAEA and the Obama administration knows that their, their intelligence about Iran is com completely uh, lacking because we don't know, we only know about, the, the, about some sites. There are lots of sites in Iran that we know nothing about, which makes this whole deal just even crazier because. Well, as well, much well Jonathan, Jonathan, yeah, I'm sorry, allow me to be Rudy Giuliani for a second. And by the way, Rudy Giuliani is a private citizen. Uh, all this hullabaloo about what he said. Uh, they keep saying, oh, he was mayor of New York. He, has, he represents the people. They were saying on CNN this morning. He represents nobody. Uh, but, but, but look, Obama's got to know this. Kerry's got to know this. Everybody knows this. If, the, if, if Obama had any interest in real intelligence on Iran, he'd be sitting down and having breakfast with Benjamin Netanyahu. He doesn't give a rat's behind. Well, of course, the point is President Obama is interested in detente with Iran. He thinks that Iran wants to get right with the world. He thinks Iran wants to join the community of nations and be pals with the United States, partners in the war against ISIS to the extent that Obama is even concerned about the war against ISIS. He wants to retreat from the Middle East and let Iran exert its hegemony. This is an outrageous and foolish policy. And you know, the problem with this whole, these negotiations is that they're going on on two levels. On the one hand, you know, if you listen to John Kerry explain it, it sort of makes a superficial sense that we'll stop them from doing this and they'll agree to do that. But below the surface, the Iranians are doing whatever the heck they want. And even this deal will, as you say, allow them to do whatever the heck they want in 10 years, 15 years down the line, kicking the can down the road to another administration in the future at best. And the, the fact is, we don't even know if the Iranians will even agree to any such deal because they're having a good time getting closer to their nuclear goal right. while stringing the Americans along. Right. All right. Very briefly, we have much less than a minute. And I think I say that you see that every time to you, Obama is setting up Israel to become the pariah of the world. He signs a deal. It's a terrible deal. Iran, uh, Israel has no choice but to take military action. And Obama, let, you know, just puts them in the corner and, and, and turns the world against them as if the world isn't against them already. Uh, that's a nightmare scenario. We don't know how it's going to play out. Again, 
there may be no deal. The Iranians may be just playing Obama for a fool. I mean, we, they are anyway. Maybe they'll never sign anything. Um, but the point right, is, well, the Israelis are in a tough position here, and they have no good options. And the, no, Obama well, is set the, them up. Survival is survival is the only option. I appreciate it, it Jonathan. Always great to talk to you. Thank you. Jennifer Rubin's next, folks. Don't go away.